Good evening and welcome to the Union Bank Court here at the Elida Fieldhouse. WSN brings you Western Buckeye League action this evening. We have the Bath Wildcats playing the Elida Bulldogs. My name is Mark Shine. My pleasure to do play-by-play. -play. Alongside do our color commentary, Coach Mark Bagley. Mark, it's Western Buckeye League night. I know that Bath not had the year they'd like to have. They upset Elida a year ago. Your, your analysis first on what we're going to see tonight. Yeah, and this is the kind of a, a, a second game of the first game from the um, tip-off. Uh, where Lina beat Bath 46-26. So I think the keys for Bath tonight, number one, they got to shorten the game. Make this game with long possessions, making Lina play D. They've got to rebound the basketball, box out and go get the ball against Elida's athleticism. And then three, emotion. Emotion is important in a rival game, a Western Buckeye League game. But more importantly, they can't be emotional. they got to play with emotion but not mo emotional. Bath comes in at 0-8 on the season. They are 0-2 in conference play. They scored at 38 a game. They give up 70, 57 and a half. Elias having a good year, Coach. They're, they're committed 8-2. and two. They're 1-1 one one in conference play. They scored at 52 a game. They give up 50. Your thoughts on, uh, on the Bulldogs this evening? Yeah, Elias had a great start to their year, the first half of the season. Uh, but it all starts with their pressure. They've got to get out quick against Bath. Who wants to come in here and, and try to right the ship a little bit tonight? So they got to pressure, the, pressure Bath's guards. Speed them up, get layup turnovers. Number two, again, rebounding is always key in the Western Buckeye League. They've got to dominate that area. And then finally, offensive execution. Elida has turned the ball over quite a bit this year, Mark. And so they're looking to clean things up and execute the start of the 2024 um, Western Buckeye League uh, action. It is a Western Buckeye League rivalry match tonight. It is the Bath Wildcats. It is the Elida Bulldogs starting lineups coming up right after this. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. The premier sponsor tonight for the Elida Bulldogs is John Stocker, DDS, sponsoring the Elida Bulldogs and providing dental care for high school sports fans. Kind of Bass' worst nightmare, Mark. Turnovers and layups. It is, and now they, they switch it to a diamond press there and trapped it, and, and at least a dead ball turnover, Mark, you can guard that. You can't guard a live ball turnover. That's six turnovers for Bath here to start the game in the first three minutes. Sharp win bound. Wash on top, looking at a 2-3 zone. Another way to slow down a game, Mark, is to play zone, and that's what Bass trying to do to make a lot of work for a good shot. Bounce pass inside. Krim works, works. Has to kick it back out. Wash tried to over-penetrate and gets the ball back, however. Sharp in the corner. Here's a left-handed jumper by Island. Bounces around. Krim high for the rebound. Parker spins in the lane. Gets it blocked, but I think we're going to get contact. Logan Markley will pick up his first foul. Team second of the opening quarter. And Parker. Krim's done a really nice job here to start the game of getting the ball inside. He, he needs to slow down a little bit and get his head up and finish, but that, that was another great offensive rebound there for him. Big, powerful sophomore will go to the free throw line. Makes the first. That gives him three points in the game. Free throws that are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima Wapak Delphus and in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Second free throw, Krim. And that will bounce out into the hands of Markley. Crawford. Tickle has baseline. Reverse layup. That will go. Xavier Tickle gets the Wildcats on the board. Three-point jumper out of the corner. Misses. That was Etzkorn. Here comes Tickle the other way. And we're going to get a foul that will go against Seth Sharp. And, Bat, and Mark, Bath did a really smart thing there. Whenever you're being pressured that hard like Elias doing, you got to do one thing. you got to drive it, you got to back cut it, or back screen it. And that time, that was just a hard drive to the basket and a nice finish. Jackson Kovalt, number 13, a senior, will replace Parker Krim almost four minutes into this one. Welched inbound. And throws it way out on top to Mark Lee. Also into the basketball game was Evan Jackson. He wears number 23 for Elida. Welsh, and double dribble to basketball. We have a sponsor for each quarter tonight. Our first quarter sponsor is 20th Century Lanes. 
They're providing something for everyone at 20th Century Lane. At Lane's a proud supporter of all Lima area athletes. They're staying with that 1-2-2 uh, two, two or 3-2 zone, and they put Foster right in the middle of it with his length. Ball was kicked. We'll stay with Elida. Playing zone and getting yourself fouled into the free throw lane. The two ways to get to uh, slow down running basketball teams. Jump shot's long. Sharp's going to hustle after the rebound, and instead it goes to Wash. Here's Island in the corner for three. Zori Island has eight made three-point field goals on the season now. And one of the things you got to do out of zone, Mark, is rebound, and that's three offense rebounds now for Elida. And so that's been a trouble spot as well. More difficult when you're not playing man-to-man -man and assign somebody to check out, and Wildcats missed one that time. Mark Lee. Trying to get inside the lane. Bounce past Welch. And he kicks it back out. Just a three that's going to go up from Foster. And the ball's tracked down the corner by Jackson. And Logan Markley will pick up his second foul of the opening quarter. Team's third. Mark, this is the first time I've seen a lot of play this year. Now, that obviously had a great start. But Coach Caves has gotten his team to buy in his physical style of defense. You can tell they're stronger. They're athletic. They're down in the stance. That was a clinic box out right there. So he really has his team uh, playing his demeanor um, and his style, and, and that's been a tribute to what he's done here at Elida. It's his third year, and that's when it really blossoms, isn't it? It is, and you can tell. Brennan, Jack, Brennan Ryan, excuse me, will enter for Markley, who got picked up that foul a moment ago. Shot and misses by Kovalt. Rebound to Foster. Tickle. Welch. Foster, step back three. Jackson Foster. Ryan gets to the rebound in the corner. Crawford penetration dribble. That will be a three ball for Xavier Tickle. That's his seventh of the season. And he's got all five Wildcat points here in the opening six minutes. And that was a great possession by Bath. They, they were patient, got a good shot, offensive rebound, then an open three. So that's a, that's a textbook play there by Bath. Sharp out of the corner for three. Welch battling for the rebound. So is Foster, rips it away from Kovalt. Basket here, and Bath will ride the ship a little bit after being down 11-2 and headed to the rim. Was Xavier Tickle when he was fouled? Make sure we get the correct call. It will go against Seth Sharp. And Seth he did, he did exactly what he should have done there. He got pressured and he, and he drove hard, hard baseline, created a foul situation. Again, with a new rule this year, um, they're not in the bonus yet. Uh, that's only two team fouls. Pair of number five, check in Joe Mosley for Bath and Tanner Roberts for Elida. Crawford. Tickle, baseline, going to try to work against Jackson. And stepped on the end line with a minute and 25 to go here in our opening quarter. We had a timeout a moment ago. Our timeouts are brought to you tonight by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Island inside off glass, just a bit hard. Brennan Ryan with his second rebound. The pace the last three minutes have been in Bath's favor, Mark, and they've done a good job of defensive rebounding here lately and, and taking care of the basketball. If they do turn it over, it's dead ball. Three ball. Three ball. Joe Mosley, his third of the season. Averages just a point and a half a game. Shoots back into the game. Cobalt misses. Scramble for the rebound. Possession arrow will say Bath. Wash and Escorn will re-enter the basketball game. One of the things I've noticed now that I, what, third or fourth Elida game this year, Coach Tabor does a really good job of always keeping fresh guys on the floor. With that pressure they play, they're always rotating guys in. 
Here's Welsh back in the game. Zach will enter with 43.6 seconds to go in our opening quarter. And he's played eight guys here in the first quarter, but really impressed with how Bath has gotten back in this game by eliminating some of the pressure. And their, and their turnovers, again, have been dead ball, which is helpful. A basket here at the end of the quarter would really help the Wildcats. Crawford, this is Ren, uh, Brent and Ryan with the basketball in the corner. And then they reset to Welsh. Escorn steal. David Escorn to the rim. Foster got back in time to bother him. Good hustle play, Jackson. Under 10 to go. Crawford for three. Wildcats have got it tied up. Wash at the buzzer from midcourt. Bath scores the last nine points of the opening quarter. We'll be tied at 11 as we head to the second. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Our instant replay sponsor tonight is Road State College. Spring 2024 registration is now open. Learn more at roadstate.edu. We're tied at 11, last nine points in a quarter. Went the way of the Wildcats. How about stats, Mark, real quick? Yeah, the, the, the difference there at the end, they were three for six from three. And Escorn takes a backdoor cut and scores. That pretty much sums it up, Mark. They, they hit three threes the last uh, three minutes, and, and it's amazing that missed layups on one end equated to made threes for, for Bath. He just told me at the break, Bath turned it over nine times in the opening quarter. Welch muscles down inside, has to pick it up. Tickled, baseline jumper. Escorn with a rebound. And most of those late were dead ball, but yeah, nine turnovers. Escor bounce pass, Parker Krim, and he will go up and draw contact. Elida up 13-11. The foul goes to number 12, Xavier Tickle. These will be Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Lima Wapak Dolphus in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken where home style happens here. First free throw does it go for Parker Krim. He had three points in the opening quarter. Second free throw coming up. Krim's second shot. Battle for the rebound inside. Elida gets it. Krim muscles up in the traffic and still fighting for the ball until Xavier Tickle is able to get it. And that appeared to be a la uh, lane violation, but That's it wasn't called there, Mark. Sure looked like it from our end, didn't yeah. it? First foul of the quarter against Elida. See, that one goes to, that one will go to Jackson Kovalt, his first foul of the game, and, of course, first of this quarter. And one of the things Elida is doing right now, Mark, they're trying so hard to get steals, and they're, they're – um, over pursuing a little bit and getting out of position, and that's that's one of the reasons why Bath got back in the game as well. Crawford on the wing. Welch bothered by Wash. Crawford against Escorn, spins into the lane and can't get loose. Foster. Great possession by Bath here. Used a lot, of, a lot of clock. Foster wanted to load up and couldn't under the pressure from Zori Island. And we're going to get an offensive foul. Jackson Foster gets called for the push off. His first, team second of the quarter. Our second quarter day is brought to you by 20th Century Lanes. There's something for everyone at 20th Century Lanes, a proud supporter of all Lima area athletes. Amari Wash. Hands off to Zori Island. Parker Krim on the baseline. And he just muscles up with the left hand. He missed a shot, fights for the rebound, and secures it, and hands the ball off to Wash for a basket. Six for him. 
Parker Crim's a beast inside. He, he is, is so physically strong. And, and when he when he learns to, to slow down a little bit and finish those, he's going to be unstoppable. His body is really good. He, he plays really hard. He's done a good job for the line tonight. And he does. Welch inside to Crawford. Spin move. Cross, Crawford ball fakes. Foster gets a look at three. Battle for the rebound. Who hit it? It's going to go out of bounds off of that score. Glad to get our scoreboard back up for you tonight. Our scoreboard is brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. And right in front of us, Zach Welch will inbound. Escorn's fighting inside along with Kovalt. Tickle was posted up down low. Who got the foul? That goes to David Etzcorn. David's first foul. And, and Coach Lozier uh, loves the four, four high out-of-bounds plays. He, him, he coached forever with Doug Davis at both Delphins Jefferson and also at, uh, at Walpock. And that, that last out-of-bounds play reminded me of trying to scout their numbers system, which was impossible. <laughs> Five minutes to go here, opening half. Foster. Bath hasn't scored in the first three minutes here of this quarter. That ball's tipped out of bounds by Zori Island. And they, you're right, Mark, they haven't, but they've kept the score within striking it's, distance. Yep. And it's a, the game has kind of gone to a law now in, in favor of, of Bath as far as tempo goes. You talked about slowing the pace of the game down, making the game a shorter game. They're doing it right here in this quarter. S double teamed, Escorn and Island. And Crawford gets a three out of the corner and nails it. Great possession. Elijah tried to speed them up by double teaming the first pass. The ball went from side, middle side, wide open three. Sorry, Island missed a three, trying to answer the one that came from Trey Crawford. Bath by trailing by a point could take the lead for the first time tonight. Foster for three. Scramble for the rebound, and the foul is going to go against a Wildcat. Trey Crawford picks up his second foul. And a huge factor for Bath, too, Mark. They, they've out-rebounded Elida 13-8 uh, to eight so far. Elida's got five offensive, but they've done a really good job of defensive rebounding. Again, a way to control tempo. Back to the zone. Switching up between man and zone. Halfway through the quarter, they go back to the zone. Koval into the lane. Muscles up, and it spins out on him. Gets his own rebound. Boy, Light has missed some shots that uh, normally they would go down and just haven't been successful so far. And Jackson Koval is a three-year player for yep. Light. He's like a sixth starter for them, yep. and he's just missed some shots inside he normally makes, and that's why Bass been able to hang around. Bath in their zone. Etzcorn running baseline. Back to Koval on top. Here's the bounce pass in tide. Tried to go cross-court to... Tanner Roberts, and who hit it out of bounds. And that was a great hustle there. Bath was first to the floor there, Mark, and, and those kind of plays help help teams that are struggling at 0-8 uh, try to get, you know, in that win column uh, on the road in the WBL. Playing with a little bit of confidence right now, I think. Down, down just a point here at 15-14. 3.23 to go in our opening half. Crawford and Wash out front. Eli Jesko entered for Bath. This is Eli right here with the basketball. Where's number one? Crawford pressured out front as he has been the entire basketball game. Jesko. Walsh is just a beast on the ball. He really does a good job moving his feet. And headed to the rim, and it'll be contact. I think it's going to be on the floor. Both teams yeah. have three fouls, Mark, so we're still a couple away from the bonus here to finish this half. And that was Jackson uh, Kovalt's foul, his second. 
Looking, looking, and they can't get it in bounds. Welch gets called for unable to inbound, inbound the ball in five seconds. Our premier sponsor tonight for the Elida Bulldogs is John Stocker, DDS. Premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Covalt in the corner, looking inside to Jackson. And now Wash. Here's Covalt. That's Storm. Penetration dribble. Lost it going up. Foster with the rebound. And again, Bath has a chance to take a lead for the first time. Crawford's going to get a three look, and he got it. His three, third three-point field goal, and the Wildcats are up by two. Great extra pass the quarter where, where he's been really hot. Wash trying to even it up, but he will take the ball to the basket and draw contact. Eli Jesko will get his first, the team's fourth into the free throw line. Goes Amari Wash. I like how he attacks the rim. He's on balance, his shoulders are square, and he, he got fouled because of those things. Wash, first free throw bounces out. And into the basketball game will come Seth Sharp. I'll tell you what else I like about Zoria Island and Amari Wash. Not only are they quick and active, but they're physically strong guards as well. And their whole team, you look at their whole yep. team, they've gotten stronger. And, and it's just been little things this first half. Bats got 15 points from the three-point line. Uh, right now, Elida is three for eight from the free throw line. It's just little things right now. And, and all credit goes to Bath. They've done a really good job of controlling tempo. Wash makes the second of the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throws. Elida trying to turn up the pressure, and Crawford wants to slow it down. Bath with a single-point lead. Under two to go here. Great job by Jackson Foster to get the ball back out and get settled. Jackson Foster tried to penetrate. It wasn't there. Tickles trying to post up inside. Spins on Wash and gets called for the offensive foul. Xavier Tickles, second foul of the game. That's a possession foul, so it won't be a free throw situation. Dead ball foul, yep. or dead ball turnover again. But but Wash, what I've noticed, really, whether he's on the ball out front or inside, he's always square, and he's always in position. And that was just a really good job of, of staying square and taking the contact for the charge. Cobalt in the corner. That's scoring, looking inside to Sharp, who's playing in the post now. Kovalt goes baseline, and rebound to Ryan, and it's slapped out of his hands by Kovalt. It will be Bass basketball. Another missed layup, Mark. It was. Do you just get the feeling this last minute 12 is really important for Bath? Yeah, go in the locker room. Go in the locker room with I, a positive I, uh, feeling. I, yeah, sprinting into the locker room, feeling good about themselves. They haven't played great by any stretch, but they've played – Efficient last 12 minutes. Here's Ryan ahead of the pack, pass across court, and a finish by Eli Jesko on the pass from Ryan. It's a three point Wildcat lead with a minute to go in the half. Escort gets a three look that bounces around, and a rebound comes to Welsh. Joe Mosley throws it to Foster. Jackson Foster, three. Jackson Foster's first basket of the night gives the Wildcats a six-point lead. And that confidence factor is there, Mark, and you can just f see it, the Bath players right now. And, and for Elida, they're high school kids. You win by 20 early in the season. It, sometimes you just think it's going to happen, and they've, they've tried too hard almost this first half to make the 20-point shot, and it's not going to happen. Trying to answer back, and he does is Zori Island. That ball spun around for a long time. He has points five, six, and seven. Huge shot for Elida. That there. was. Bath trying to get last shot of the quarter. Foster, corner jump shot is off, but it will not count. Good second quarter for the Bath Wildcats, and they will take a 22-19 lead to the break. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to the Union Bank Court here at the Elida Fieldhouse. Our timeout sponsor tonight has been Metzger Financial Services. 
That's the Financial Services helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MexicoFinancialServices.com. Coach Mark Bagley, you've got stat numbers in front of you, some interesting things on that page. There is. First for Bath, 22 points. They're 2 of 4 from 2. 6 of 11 from 3 for 53% total. No free throws attempted. For Elida, 5 of 16 from 2. 2 of 6 from 3, 32% from the field. They're 3 of 8 from the line, 38%. Uh, Bath is winning the rebound uh, margin of, of 15 to 10. They've also had 12 turnovers, only 3 for Elida. So you can see there the three-point shooting has been the difference mark in this first half. Trey Crawford has 9 to lead the Bath Wildcats, 7 apiece from Zori Island and Amari Wash. Elida quarter scores of 11 and 8. Bath quarter scores of 11 and 11. And so many times we've talked about the first three minutes of the third quarter. That could be really key tonight. Bath with the basketball first. And I'm sure that Coach Tabes had, had a lot of discussions at halftime about some things that Lottie didn't do well. They were in the locker room a long time. Ball's kicked out, and it's going to be an over and back call, I believe. No, it was tipped. And Markley didn't realize it and stepped out of bounds with the ball. So opening possession for Bath becomes their 13th turnover of the basketball game. And again, the dead ball turnover, I know I've harped on that. At least they can defend out of that. And they're, they're in the zone now to hopefully make it light to stand around and shoot jump shots. Parker Krim inside. Island will go baseline. His bounce pass was going to go cross lane, but he ran over Xavier Tickle. And you'll see the charge here. No he tried to jump stop. He actually tried to do mm -hmm. the right thing, and, and but made enough contact there that knocked the bath player over there. Our rinse replays there are brought to you by Road State College. Spring 2024 registration is now open. Learn more at roadstate.edu. Thank you for them for sponsoring our instant replays this evening as a very active Amari Wash knocks the ball out of bounds. This is where bath has got to be really sharp in their L cuts or V cuts. Again, how to attack pressure defense off the drive, off the back screen, off the back door. Xavier Tickle will find Jackson Foster. Foster has a tip loose from behind, and Welch will let it go out of bounds. Jackson Foster will become the trigger man out of bounds. 6'2 junior. And Bath knows Goliath is going to make a run. It just can't be 9-0, 12-0, whatever that may be. It's got to be a, a short run, whether it's not layup turnovers. Crawford, he of the nine points, throws it on top. Tickle tries to spin in the lane and will give it up to Markley. Good patience. Welch. Into the corner to Xavier Tickle. Markley wanted to look at three, couldn't get a shot. Very patient bath possession as we're at 6.24 here in third quarter action. And moving the ball side, middle side, Mark, will get the defense to move and create shots for him. Here's a long jumper that rattles out. Escorn rebounds on the back side. No score here, two minutes into half number two. Island will throw it to Wash in the corner. He's got a three look. Amari Wash with 10 points now has tied the game at 22 with that three ball. And it's also easy to amp the pressure up too when you make a basket. And we are going to get a Metzger Financial Services called by the Wildcats. You're watching high school basketball, WOSN. We're back at Elida, where our free throws that are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Good timeout, Coach Lozier. That was a great timeout. I think he sensed that tide. And I'm really looking at Epscorn right now. I, you know, he's averaging about 10-11 a game, and he's only got two. I think he's got, a, he's got an opportunity here to really get a, a run here for Elida. Crawford took the ball to the baseline. Markley on top. And swing it to Welch. 
only basket here in the third quarter was that shot by Zori Island a moment ago, or by Amari Wash a moment ago. And we're going to get a foul on penetration dribble. Amari Wash will get his first foul. And the team's second of this half. Here's that out of bounds play. Four across the foul line. Who moves? Who cuts? Who screens? Markley took the ball, heads to the rim left-handed, and gets a shot blocked by Parker Krim. Island pushes the other way to Sharp, and we've got contact and an offensive foul. Seth Sharp will run over Xavier Tickle and get called for the foul. That's Seth's third foul. Give it a bath credit there. Uh, that was a bang-bang call. Yep. And give him credit for trying to get in position. Again, every coach, uh, blocker charge, they don't like the call or they love the call, but at least something was called. That, that's important. With Sepp Sharp's third foul, Jackson Kovalt will enter the basketball game. And he gets a steal right away. And, oh, we went to the rim and had a chance for, to get an and one. But instead, we'll get a couple of free throws. And Jackson's had several inside rattle yeah, around. That's yeah. kind of been the light of his night tonight. Just missed a lot of shots inside uh, or a charge or something's happened to them. And give credit to Bath. They've really played a, a nice game tonight. Zach Welsh will get his first foul. And Koval makes the free throw for his first point of the game. Average is 6.2 a game. Puts his team back on top after trailing by three at half. And now they will lead by two. And here comes the press. A couple of Lee's famous recipe free throws for Koval Steele. And to the rim, Zori Island. Here comes Elida's pressure. To Foster. And it throws into Markley and missed it. Wash has the ball. Elida back the under, other way in a hurry. Kovalt ball fakes and goes to the rim. And that will be a blocking foul that will put Jackson Kovalt back to the free throw line. And Xavier Tickle will get his third foul. And you can see, Mark, on these makes, what's happening, Bath is standing straight up. They're not making hard cuts. And they're not stepping to their, their next pass. They're, all their passes right now are flat-footed. And Elida is just seeing the blood in the water right now, and they're swarming the basketball. Jackson Kovalt, who made a pair of free throws a moment ago, has now made three consecutive Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Our, second, our third quarter day is sponsored by 20th Century Lanes. There's something for everyone at 20th Century Lanes. Proud supporter of all Lima area athletes. Kovalt four for four from the free throw line. Stat page says he struggled from the free throw line this year, but not tonight. He's been dead center. Four for four after a lot of went three for eight in the first half. Ball's poked out of bounds. Nope, saved. Here comes Island the other way. Bounce passes to Wash. Pressure defense gets Wash. His points number 11 and 12. And Coach Lozer sensed it. He called the timeout, but sometimes... There's nothing you can do to stop that, that all, bleeding. All 11 second half points have been scored by the home team. There's another pull. He's going to get a foul instead. Thought they had another steal. Parker Krim will pick up his first foul. Bass going to make a substitution to bring Joe Mosley into the game. It's like sharks when there's blood in the water. It, when, it when they sense they're on a run, they really turn it up. And they sped Bath up. Sp yep. Bath was playing under control, and sometimes when you get pressured, it makes you do funny things, and that speeds you up. Jackson Foster missed a three. Long rebound to Amari Wash, and he beats everybody down the floor and scores. He's going to get an and one opportunity. Thirty-two, twenty-two. Elida with Wash going to get another opportunity. Jackson Foster picks up his second foul, and into the basketball game will be Evan Jackson for Elida. And what do we got? Kurt Lozier called a timeout. We do. Mark. Kurt Lozier from Bath takes another timeout. It's a Metzger Financial Services timeout, brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. 
We're about to get an Amari Wash free throw, and our free throw set are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Coach Lozier needed another timeout halfway through the quarter. And, and again, it was a good timeout. They needed it. And, and Lida now is playing the way that they envisioned to start the game. And, and there wasn't a 20-point shot there, but there was a 12-0 run. Wash misses that free throw, but it's tipped back in to Etzkorn and stolen in the corner by Jesko. Well, by Joe Mosley, excuse me. And Elida jumps right into their pressure defense. Just Mosley. tremendous ball pressure. It is. Now doubled up. Crawford. Markley tries to go baseline with the left hand, and he is fouled. Evan Jackson will get that foul. That's the fifth team foul of the quarter, I believe. It is. That'll put Logan Markley to the free throw line, a nine-point-a-game score. He's scoreless this evening. Shoots 64% from the free throw line on the season. And that is Bass' first point here in the second half. It took him 4.15 to get there. Yeah, and, and that's been, again, a, a credit to Lida. And, and I think what you're also seeing is a lot of depth. This lineup right here that they, that they put in has really given them a spark. Uh, Koval hit four free throws, and, and they did, this really have played well this last three-minute stretch. Elida leads 32-24. There's 3.45 to go in quarter number three. Bass going to shoot a lot of free throws if they can get uh, some foul calls because uh, Lida's going to be a double bonus here the rest of the quarter. And they've gone back to that zone, it looks like, and... and Trying to slowly light it down again um, by, by playing zone defense. Cobalt runs baseline in this attack. Pressure into the lane. Rebound. Wash. Soars over everybody. Cobalt gets a three look. Ball's tipped around. Ends up in Wash's hands. Wash is always around the ball. Escorn's floater. Escorn tips it to Jackson. And the ball's lost on a pass going cross court. Trey Crawford with the basketball. Bath needs a field goal. Mosley was trying to get inside with a pass and will be fouled by Zori Island. Zori's second. And when you pressure that hard like a lot of does, you have to live with some of the, the consequences. And right now the consequences are free throws the rest of the quarter for Bath here with this new rule of five team fouls uh, per quarter. Joe Mosley, who made a three-point field goal in the opening quarter. We'll get uh, two free throws, 2.53 to go. Point number four for him in this evening. Elida making some changes. They bring in Tanner Roberts again. Also, Parker Krim will come back in. Seven-point game at 32.25. And at this point, Mark, what, what, what Bath wants to do is be within striking distance heading into the fourth quarter. That's, that's all they can ask for. Got it down to six with 2.45 to go in quarter number three. And two possessions is striking distance for sure. That score is running baseline. Ends up with a nice pass inside. Well executed play, and Tanner Roberts gets the basket because of it. That was a great drag screen. Ran yep. the guy to the corner, and they drug him right behind it. You can't guard both of them. Great execution by Elida. Mosley finds Crawford. Crawford goes baseline, gets cut off by Krim, and lost it out of bounds. We already mentioned that the game with Brian that Elida had tomorrow has been postponed, so their next action will be here next Friday night with Salina, and then on the 20th, they will get Lima Central Catholic here for a 3 o'clock in the afternoon JV start. Lobbed out front. Tickle gets it. Xavier works the lane, goes up through traffic and scores. Xavier Tickle's got seven in the game. Bass got it back to six again. Tacked off the dribble hard, got a shoulder square, good finish. That score goes baseline where he gets cut off and surrounded, and Coach Tabor will take a Metzger Financial Services timeout. Timeout for us also. You're watching high school basketball, WOSN.
The premier sponsor for the United Bulldogs is John Stocker, DDS. He's proud, a proud sponsor for the United Bulldogs and providing dental care for high school sports fans everywhere. First United timeout. Coach saving a possession right there. He did, and, and you know the rule, every coach has different rules there, but, but my guess is Coach Tabe's rules, let's save those kind of effort type timeouts for guys on the floor for the second half, to save as many as you can for that third and fourth quarter. Good use of a timeout, especially if they can score here. Eskorn comes off a screen, gets a three look. I would call that a successful timeout. And, and, and we've been looking for Eskorn to, to start to heat up a little bit. And when, when he gets hot, then they've got multiple scores, uh, and that's what makes them so dangerous. That is his 21st three-point field goal of the season. He's got five points today, about half of his average. All of a sudden, it's a nine-point game. Bath had it at six. Here's Jackson Foster, and now into the corner to Mosley. Foster will get a three look. That's long and goes over the backboard. Did you know that TV44 and WSN are nonprofit? You are supporting TV stations, support local TV right in this region with a donation of any size. You can donate online anytime at axeministries.com or call 419-339-4444. Elida with an 18-point quarter going right here. Has to look like they're going to play last shot. Bass going to pick them up man-to-man. -man. Or no. And going back to that end of the half, Bath was up six, Mark, and, and Island hit a big time yep. three to cut it to three. And, and since that time, they've really kind of taken control of the game here. And they're content to play for one if Bath's going to stay back in the zone. 48 seconds to go here and on our Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Web Insurance Agency serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. And here comes the shot clock discussion. Mark. Oh, yeah. Again, it's going to happen. It's a matter of time, but um, we're not there yet. So if you're behind, you got to – I think it's – if you're behind, you got to go play and make the team make an effort, which is what Bass doing right now. A lot of teams run high ball screens in this situation. Let's see what Coach Tabler's put together. Zori Island with the basketball. Double high screen. Double high screen, you're correct. Island turns the corner, goes to the rim, and overshot it. Escort battles for the rebound. And with 1.2 seconds to go, Bath will have the basketball. And Bath made him widen out just enough where he had a tough angle to bank that in, and, and two a lot of players fought for the rebound, went out of bounds. Pass in bounds, or was it? It was not touched, and therefore Elida gets the basketball. What do we got? And the, and the ball, the clock should have never started I there, see. Mike. Yep. It wasn't, or Mark, it wasn't touched. And now that's the coach's worst nightmare because you're already down and you, you lost some confidence. And now Elida has a chance for a, yep. probably a tip play somewhere. Here comes Eben Jackson in the game. This is going to be a tip at the rim, isn't it? Yes. And there he goes right there. And there's the play. And they got the basket. Great sub, great call, great play, great execution. Elida. With an 11-point lead as we head to the fourth, you're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Union Bank Court here at the Elida Fieldhouse. Our instant replay tonight has been brought to you by Road State College. Spring 2024 registration is now open. Learn more at roadstate.edu. And that one, Mr. Mark Bagley, was a 20-6 quarter for the Elida Bulldogs. And if you look, go back to the keys of the game, I think Elida could check off all three of theirs uh, in the third quarter, and Bath wouldn't get any check marks. And that's been the difference from a three-point deficit. Now Elida's up 11 with the ball. Uh, just a kind of deflating into the third quarter. Ball's tipped out of bounds, and will go off the leg of Zori Island. Amari Wash leads everybody in scoring this evening. He has 14. Zori Island has nine. Trey Crawford has nine for Bath. And as much as they relied on the three-point field goal in the first half, they had none in quarter number three. No, they, they didn't get many shots that quarter. Markley gets his shot blocked by Parker Krim. And somebody got called for a rebound foul. I think Jackson Foster pushed on the backside. That would be correct. And Jackson Foster now has three fouls. And then 21 seconds into quarter number four, he has, uh, Bath has one team foul. Comes Joe Mosley in the game. Joe wears number five. He's got five points in the game. 
JV game was won tonight by Bath. They won that game 47-25. Actually played very, very well this evening in the JV contest. Here's Zori Island. Pilotic can be really patient right now against their man-to-man -man and get the shot they want. They're trying to go inside right now. Parker Krim, bounce pass, tried to get it to Wash. Wash saves it to the corner. At score. They're just going one in, four out right now, Mark, and letting them go to work and look to score a pass. Parker Krim was working on Logan Markley and knocked him over. Parker Krim will get his second foul. What I love about Elida, Mark, is they're, they're a mature team. You can tell that. They're, it's next play mentality. They're, yep. they're not complaining about calls. They're not doing anything. Their, their expression has been has been stone-faced on Elida. It's been very businesslike for Elida. That's, that's the sign of a – a veteran program and coached well by Coach Taves. Here's Jackson Foster on the wing. Bath trails by 11. Foster gets it stolen by Parker Krim. Big fella goes cross court to Seth Sharp and Seth bounces one around that won't go. And Parker Krim knocked it off the leg of a Bath Wildcat. Right in front of our broadcast area. Wash to the lane, to the line, scoop shot, no. Parker Krim, that was a man-sized rebound and basket. And he has really impressed us tonight, Mark. He's done a lot of good things. He's not a point guard. We saw that last possession when he let yeah. it break, but he's done a lot of good things inside. He's built like a man. 13-point lead, Bulldogs, 6.22 to go in the basketball game. Crawford goes all the way to the rim and will finish with the right hand, and he becomes a double-figure scorer for Coach Kirk Lozier with 11. And right back the other way, and rolling one is David Etz scoring for point six and seven for him. And Elida will take a Metzger Financial Services timeout. Our timeout center brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Back in a moment, you're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Our scoreboard has the Elida Bulldogs at 43 and Bath at 30. Our scoreboard tonight is brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. That was a Matt Tabor timeout, 6.07 to go in a 13-point lead. Logan Markley will be the inbounder against Seth Sharp. They gave up a straight-line layup last possession. I think Coach Caves went to reinforce that. We're going to play fast, but not in a hurry. Both offensively and defensively, they kind of gambled there and gave up a driving lane. Crawford turns the lane right there and slipped out of bounds. It's called for traveling. I do a little cleanup on the baseline, and Seth Sharp will be the inbounder. Next week in the Western Buckeye League, Adam McGlender goes to Bass. Salina comes to Elida. Kenton goes to Defiant. Shawnee at Wapak and St. Mary's at Van Wert. Will be your Western Buckeye League games next week. At score. And finds Island. Wash heads to the rim. Bounce passes to Sharp. Barkley battles for it. So does Welsh. And we're going to get a foul. That will be a bath foul. And Wash is still learning how to play. For a sophomore, he, he does so many things well. But that time he drove and over-penetrated. And the jump pass, you know, as a coach, that's one of your nightmares that you never practice that. So yeah. let's not... Let's not use that pass in a game if you don't practice that. And while the official was making his call, Coach Tabor was explaining just that thing to his point guard. There's Island. Tried to get Etzcorn on the back cut. And skates all the way through the lane. Reverse layup. Parker Krim tips it to Sharp. And Markley will get a foul. And again, Krim's ability to get his hand on the ball and tip it to a teammate. Uh, made numerous times tonight, multiple offensive rebounds. He is the ultimate, you know, role player and glue player for that team. And, and for them to make a run, he's got to be that way. Sorry, Island. 
Throws it to Etzcorn on the inbounds pass. Five minutes to go, 43-30, Elida. Well, it's been a really good second half for the Bulldogs. Etzcorn for three. And Island throws it all the way back out to teammate Wash. Great alertness there by Island to see a teammate. Wash goes to the rim and gets it knocked out of bounds by Markley. Hey, special night. I hope the weather doesn't bother us. We've got Ottawa Glandorf, number two team in Division Three in the state, against Finley, the number two team in Division One in the state. That will air Saturday night at 10.30 on WTLW. And we put the band back together again. Mark Miller, Jerry Snodgrass will join me for that game. So just a special night all the way around. I hope the weather doesn't interfere with our plans for Saturday, Saturday night basketball on WTLW slash WOSN. That's the A-team, Mark. You yeah. guys got the A-team going that game. That well, right. I thought about the other day. There's about 210 years of experience there. Short jumper, rebound Ryan. That should be a fantastic game. Uh, you know what? We talked about that a little bit of a staff meeting this week. We traded some stuff. We like to tell stories and enjoy our time together as Markley rattles around a three and island rebounds. But we don't want the storytelling to overcome the basketball game. It's a great game tomorrow night. Etzcorn secures it in the corner. And guess who tipped it to him? Yes, Krim. He gets his hand on so many balls, doesn't he? He, he works so hard inside to get position, every possession. And they spread him out now. And Bass got to make a decision. With, with only two or uh, three fouls, they got to start fouling here to get getting the bonus. And the bonus is different. Yep. It's two shots, and you're much more comfortable versus a one on one. That will be a Logan Markley foul. That is his fourth. Jackson Kovalt enters after a good third quarter for him. And also back in for Bath will be Xavier Tickle. Going back to Finley, Mark, I, I've heard so many good things about their team. And, yep. and they bring a four-star quarterback off the bench. So you know you've got some really good athletes and basketball players when you can bring Ryan Montgomery off the bench to, to, to play for them. So well, they got a young man named Cordonier who is a, a 6'6", 210-pound post player who can flat do everything is having a great year. Um, Finley's undefeated coming into action tonight. As Island missed that shot, but the rebound goes to Elida, and they'll get free throw opportunities. Foul is assessed, too. I'm waiting for it to be on the board. That will be Jackson Foster's third foul. To the free throw line will go Seth Sharp. Good free throw shooter on the season, but scoreless tonight. And rattles that in for his first point of this evening on a Mesker Financial, or excuse me, a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw. Seth has done a really good job, Mark, of playing his role. Yes. Uh, he's been with Coach Tabor now for three years, and, and he, he's got a really calming influence on that team and did a really nice job there to clean up the mess, got offensive rebound, and now getting rewarded with a couple free throws. He and Escorn, the only two senior starters, and there's Kovalt with another rebound. And he wrestles it away from Jackson Foster to reset the offense. Three minutes to go. And Bath had to keep this game in the 40s tonight, knowing they're only average about that many points, and they almost have, have done that, but just they just can't score enough. And this second half, they've only scored eight points. When this game comes to an end, Coach Bagley and I will spend a moment and figure out who our Stouty Hustle Award winner and a wonderful footwork move, and Parker Krim has points six and seven. And Krim showed a lot. They're up and under, went to his left hand inside. You want to stay tuned after the... Final horn goes off and find out who our Stanley Hustle Award winner is tonight. Also has some final stats and some closing thoughts this evening. On Western Buckeye League action here from the Elida Fieldhouse. Crawford for three. And we have a whistle. Looks like Jackson Koval was called for shoving through the screen. And that happens a lot when Bath run, uh, runs that four high. They run lots of different actions out of this. That was a triple screen and a step back three. They just ran through it. Markley trying to get inside and Canada Jackson Foster for three. And that has gone cold for the Wildcats as they made six three-point field goals in the opening half to take a three-point lead. They've been shut out from the three-point line in the second half. 
and Jackson's had really good looks for three tonight. He's one of their leading scorers. This hadn't been, it's been a little off, and, and you know, they need all their players to get their averages plus more for them to be successful. And he, you know, it happens sometimes in basketball, and, and he wasn't able to hit those shots tonight. Trey Crawford is the only senior who starts for the Wildcats, so it's a learning experience year for Coach Lozier's team. Cole Vault to Etzcorn as we approach two minutes to go. And Bass' effort has been really good tonight. They've done a lot of good things, but Eli's just a better basketball team right now in, the, in their progression, and they've put a really good second half. If the weather doesn't interfere with things, Bath will play Spencerville tomorrow, that very good Spencerville team. That'll be a 4.30 JV start at Bath. And then on the 19th, they will host Ottawa Glandorf. It'll be a week from this evening. And, and Bath's in, in, in a hard part of their schedule right now for sure. Here's Amari Wash at the free throw line. 14 points in the game for him. And now 15 as he makes a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw. This quarter's been sponsored by 20th Century Lanes. There's something for everyone at 20th Century Lane, a proud supporter of all Lima athletes. Here's Wash's second free throw. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw. Makes both of those. 16 in the game for him. Markley gets a three out of the corner. Missed everything. And Island rebounds. And the first game mark ended up being a 20-point margin. And this game, although probably very much different, is going to be a similar type margin. Spread him out. And Island goes to the rim. Gets the ball to Crib. That's a nice pass by the big man to find a cutting wash. And Amari Wash now has 18. And I think that uh, Eli is going to start getting subs in now. Crawford. Xavier Tickle pulls up the three-point line. The rebound comes to Amari Wash. Throws it ahead to Zoe Island. And Island shots blocked out of bounds to me. I'm open. Good catch, Mark. I'm open. I saved you. My hands were up, but you were quicker. Well, I don't know about that. It just happened to bounce my way. And naturally, our camera doesn't get my wonderful reaction to the basketball, but it, it was clean, too. Your it was clean. I, well, I was ready. I was set. I had the shooting pocket going. I think but... you were in triple threat. Oh, those days are long over, my man. I think I'd get hurt getting a triple threat <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. 112 to go. Inbounding the basketball will be uh, Keegan Bullock. He wears number 14. He checked in, as did Tanner Roberts. Looking around to see who else is out here. 11, Mason Dayhill also has entered for Elida to go with the Island and uh, Parker Cribs doing the basketball game. This is Zori Island. Over at the scorer's table is Gabe Adcock. This is, a dead ball situation. this is when a ref needs to blow their whistle yep. and, and find a, something on the floor. Also over there is uh, another bulldog. If we can get a dead ball. I saw a coach in this situation told his player to travel. Just start walking with a basketball. Parker Krim muscles inside. The ball's tipped out of bounds. This time by Keegan Bullock. And we're going to get a couple of uh, bulldog substitutions into the basketball game. Good and gave Adcock. It's always great to get players in the end of the game. And yeah. they've worked hard and practice all week, too. Sometimes it can be frustrating if your JV kids didn't play very well in their game to put them in. But that's part of the deal. And, and you let, try to let them play it out. And, and, and as always, classic sportsmanship by the Western Buc Buckeye League teams. Logan Markley goes to the rim. He's got four points in the basketball game to make it 50-32. And the clock begins to run down. Ball stolen on the wing and headed to the basket is Joe Mosley, who gets cut off and then is knocked out of bounds by Mason Dayhill. Big basketball game for the ladies this week. Ottawa, Glendorf, and Bath play this week. Two of the top teams in that conference. That'll go a long way towards who wins the Western Buckeye League for the ladies this year. 
Ball's tipped out of bounds with 2.4 go to stay with Bath. And it always is. It doesn't uh, matter who the, who the names are, but it's Bath and OG, and that'll be a great game. That it will. Pass in bounds, jumper out of the corner, short, and this one will come to an end. Big second half for the Elida Bulldogs, and they will take a 50 32 win over the Bath Wildcats. Coach Bagby and I'll be back in a moment. Stanley Hustle Award winner stats. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Elida Fieldhouse for one final time this evening. Elida has taken a 50-32 win over the Bath Wildcats. Our first order of business is to present our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. Stolly Insurance provides you that opportunity. And check out the highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WSN YouTube page. And Mark, it didn't take us very long to figure out this one tonight. We went with uh, Elida's Parker Krim tonight. Yeah, Parker wasn't the leading scorer. Um, wasn't... Uh, you know, even instrumental in, in a lot of things that happened uh, defensively. But what happened was offensively, he kept balls alive. Uh, he had seven points. He had o over five rebounds as well. Um, and, and just did a lot of little things right for them tonight and, and made all the effort plays. He was first to the floor, first to the ball. He tipped a lot of balls to other players. And so uh, sometimes it's not always the leading scorer that gets that, that hustle award winner. And, and for Parker tonight, he just played an outstanding game. If it is a hustle award win, he was a hustle award winner tonight by his af af efforts. Bath will drop to 0-9 on the season, 0-3 in Western Buckeye League. Quarter scores of 11-11, 6-4. Four. They were led in scoring tonight by Trey Crawford, who had 11 points. He lied up. They will go to 9-2 and 2-1 and two and one in the Western Buckeye League. Quarter scores for them of 11, 8, 20, and 11. It's 31 to 10 in the second half. Elida really turned it on. It did. Bath played an outstanding first half. Shot the three ball well. And after being up three and a half, Elida's pressure just wore them out. And they had nothing left when we got to the fourth quarter. And congrats to Elida and Bath. They showed some improvement tonight. And I think, you know, that'll go a long way to finish up their year and, and, and just try to get that first win if they can get that at some point. I want to thank our sponsors tonight. Web Insurance Agency, Road State College, 20th Century Lanes, Dr. John Stocker, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, and the Metzger Financial Services. And of course, Dave Evans here at the Elida Fieldhouse. We want to thank our crew as well. Our director tonight has been Jennifer Beck, and our camera people tonight have been Derek Henry and Kelsey Beimer. We thank you for watching as well. Elida goes to 9-2, and 2-1 two, two and with a 50-32 win over the Bath Wildcats. You've been watching high school basketball on WOSN.